We're continuing now with the preliminaries in R. And now we're going to talk, we just talked about objects and functions, and we're going to talk about some specific classes of objects, in particular in this set of slide vectors, and then we'll talk about data frames a little bit later. So we talked about objects, and anything that you have in R is held in an object. Um, they can be structured though, so, so there are these different classes of objects, and depending on which class you use, you'll have a different structure, some different rules, and it will vary which functions can use that object as an input. These different structures are called object classes. We're going to look at two of these. So we will be working a lot in this class using what's called the, the tidy verse approach or the tidy approach to coding in R. And for that one, it's really nice because it uses a common type of input and output. It really focuses a lot of the work and analysis on, on um, using data frames and storing your data in a data frame. So we're going to talk about those. Sometimes those are also called tibbles, and that's how we'll form them with the tibble package. But then we'll also talk about vectors, which are kind of a building block for that, and, and um, a nice small unit that we'll use a lot throughout our code. So for both of these, we're going to look a little bit about how that class is structured, how to make a new object with that class, and then how to extract values if you have an object that's in that class. We're going to talk about how you can make an object with these classes from scratch, um, but I think it is important to, to make you aware right now that a lot of times once you start getting into a lot of coding, you'll be reading data into these classes rather than, than typing out and entering all the data by hand. So we're going to start with a vector class, and I've done a little cartoon here of what this looks like. Um, I have a son who is 11 at the time of filming this, and one of his favorite book series is Harry Potter. So we're going to have some examples today from Harry Potter for that. So a vector you can think of as a string that can take multiple values, but they all have to be the same type of thing. So this is an example of a vector where we have the names of three of the main characters and you can see that we've got those elements kind of like beads on a string. So you can have different types of these. Um, there's, there's a hard and fast rule in R that within a vector, each of the kind of beads on that string has to be an element that has the same type of data in it. So I've shown some examples for that here. We're starting from the, the most basic into some that are a little bit more complex where there's kind of an extra layer on top. So um, the first is a character class. You can think of these as things like names, um, things that are made of a string of characters. This can be just about anything you could type into your keyboard. Um, but these, for, for these, you can create a uh, vector with elements in the character class and you can draw on anything you could imagine for those. So we could put any name in there. Um, the second that we'll look at a lot is the numeric class. This is where you can put in numbers. So here I put in as an example the number of children in each of the families for these three characters. So by putting these in as numeric, R realizes that they're things that you can add together and subtract and do some other meaningful operations with. Another one that's very basic is a logical class. This can only take two values, true and false. Um, next, we'll move into a couple that are a little bit more complex. They've kind of, again, got that extra layer on top. So one is a factor class. And when you look at these at first, they look a whole lot like the character class. They're in quotations. They're using strings. The, the values here can, again, be any, any uh, character string. But the difference here is when we do a factor, we do that when we've got just a set discrete number of categories. Um, so for example, here I've done the hair color for these three characters. And so we might imagine maybe we have 10 choices of hair color. Um, and if we set up so that each of the values in the vector can only have one of those values, then we can set that up as a factor. And then we can do interesting things like count up the number of cases that we have of people with brown hair and people with red hair. Um, the last one that I've put in here is the date class. So again, this is in quotation marks. Um, it's with numbers in quotation marks. Uh, so it looks a little bit like a character class. 
But the difference here is that once you have something in a date class, it's got a little bit more embedded in it. It's, it's got some numerical information underneath that's counting the number of days since a certain origin date. And then by having that stored under, when you ask it to print out, it prints out in this nice format that you can understand very easily. But it's got what it needs for R to be able to do things like um, calculate the number of days between two different dates or pull out what the weekday is for a specific date that you give it. To create any of these vector objects, you'll use the function called concatenate. And it's one of the shortest functions we'll see. It's just got C. So this is an example of creating a vector with the names of those three characters. Again, this is a um, one where all of the data is in the character class. And so I'm putting in each of those strings inside quotation marks and then separating them with commas. Doing what I just did, it just prints it out, but it doesn't save it for later. As we talked about in an earlier set of slides, if we want to be able to use this later and not have to type it out again, then we should take that um, vector creation and assign it to an object that we can call later. So I've done that here using the gets arrow, and in this case I chose to name it main characters. And then later, if I want to do something like print it, I can just refer to that object name rather than having to type everything out again. And just as a refresher, now that we've talked about function calls and we've talked about objects and we've talked about operators and, and some of these pieces, I wanted to, to break apart how for this function, uh, excuse me, this expression, everything's working out. So we've got a couple of functions. We've got the assignment operator, which is that special kind of function that goes in between. And then we've got the concatenate function. That's one of the more classic ones where it's followed by the parentheses and then the arguments inside. And in this case, the arguments are the values we want to put in it, it, as kind of the beads in that string. And then on the other side, we've got the object name that we'll use later to refer to this function. Excuse me, this, this object that we've created. So I've showed how to use concatenate. You will use it a little bit differently depending on the class of, of object that you're creating, the, the, the data type in that vector. So I won't go into how to create um, dates or factors. Those take a, a, a bit of extra work on top of this. But um, I will talk some for creating character vectors and numeric vectors right now. So for character vectors, you'll take each character string and you need to put it inside quotation marks. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then R will think that you're referring to some object you've created earlier. So let's look at that. We can do the main characters and then our gets arrow. Now the concatenate function. And then inside, we can put each of those names. Each of them we're putting in quotation marks and then we're separating the different values by a comma. And so that's work that's created this main characters function that we wanna use. If we had tried though to create this, without doing the quotation marks, we'll see that R looks and, and, and thinks that we should have an assignment, uh, an object assigned somewhere with those names. So you can see here, it gives us the error that Harry was not found. And that's because that's the first thing it got to here. It doesn't have quotation marks around it. And so it thinks that it is an object that we defined earlier and we're referring to the object name rather than a character string. When you're assigning a numeric vector, on the other hand, you won't use quotation marks. So you leave just the number there. You can look at that here. So we're doing the number of kids in each family. So that worked and we can see it. And now we can do things like we could add two to each of these. And R understands how to do it because it knows it's a numeric vector. If we try to take main characters and add two to each of those, R tells us it doesn't know what to do with that because it's a, it's a character uh, class in the vector and it doesn't know how to do, um, how to use a plus sign and add things on to something that's not numeric. 
if you have a vector already defined and you are curious about what class it's in, you can use the class function to see that. So here I'm calling that with those two vectors that we just defined. Um, and you can see that it, it is reassuring us that the main characters one is indeed a character class and the number of kids is a numeric class. All right, this is, this is something that um, R will do if you try to, to not define things originally having all the same class. So um, I mentioned that each value in that string has to have the same class. But if you assign something where that rule isn't followed, R will give you an error. It will let you try. But what happens is it will coerce everything to be in the most general possible of, of, of the, the um, data types. So here's an example where I'm creating an object that I've called mixed classes. And in the concatenate function, I've got two values that have a numeric class and one that's got a character class. And again, this does have a number to it, but because we're, we put it in quotation marks, R won't recognize it as that. It just thinks of it as a character. And so when we look at it, you can see that it's added quotation marks around everything now. And if we look at the class, it'll be in a character class because the most generic, kind of easiest to fit things into of the, the types of data that we put in when we assign the original objects was a character class, it coerces everything into having that same class. So we talked about the, the um, class of the data as one of the important characteristics of a vector. Another one is how long it is, how many elements it has in, in that string. And you can find that out for a, for a vector by using the length function. So you do that, and then as your x argument, you can put in the name of the vector that you want to find out how long it is. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about for vectors right now is how, if you have a vector, you can pull out certain pieces of it. For this, you'll use something called square bracket indexing. You'll put the name of your object and then these square brackets, and inside of it, you can put a number or a vector of numbers saying which positions you want to pull out. And when you do that, we'll count, the very first element will count as one, and the next one is two, and so on. And that's something that's a little bit different from some other programming languages. In some, they start with zero for indexing. So for the first element, you would put in zero. In R, you start with one. So let's look at an example here. We have our main characters object. And if we want to pull out the second value, we can do two for that. And you can see that it's pulled it out now. Now there are some cases where you don't just want to get one thing, you want to get several things. And so we can actually take advantage a little bit more of our vectors in doing that. And we can put inside the square brackets a vector with the numbers of all of the positions that we want to extract. So for example, actually let me show just just the vector. So as a reminder, if we want to create a vector just with 1 and 3, those are numbers. So we do it without quotation marks, and we can use concatenate. And you can see that's printed out the numbers 1 and 3. So if we want to extract the first and the third values, we can do main characters. And then inside the square brackets, we can put that little vector with those three numbers. And that'll pull it out. We could even do things like if we want to repeat the first one and then do the third one and then maybe do the second one. We can do any combination that we want and it'll pull out those values and make a new vector for us where it's put each of those values from the original one in that place in the order of the new vector. The other thing that's very helpful for doing this is there's a colon operator that will take two numeric values and it'll create a numeric vector that is increasing by, by one unit each time along the string of that. So for example, if we do 1 colon 5, then you can see that creates a vector of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can use that. And if we wanted to pull out the first two values, we could do 1 to 2. And that'll pull out just the first two values. Or if we wanted to do the second and third values, we can do that this way. All right, so this is what I just mentioned with that with the colon operator. 
So um, that finishes up what we're talking about for vectors right now. And in the next set of slides, we'll look at how we can put these together to create data frames, which is the other key class we want to look at.